Uh, good evening, members, and welcome to Cabinet Meeting 17th of June 2021. Fire alarm procedures. If the fire alarm is activated, vacate the offices via the stairs. Please do not use the lifts. Assemble in Hawley Square on the green. Officers will assist you and advise when it is deemed safe to return to the chamber. Please switch off or turn to silent your mobile phones and do not make or receive calls whilst the meeting is in progress. Please note this meeting is being live streamed for members of the public. The meeting will also be recorded and will subsequently broadcast on the internet. Does anyone intend to film the meeting? No? The following members have asked to speak under Council Procedure Rule 20.1. Item 4, Councillor Austin. Item 6, Councillor Bailey, Councillor Garner. Item 7, Councillor Everett. Does anyone else wish to speak under 20.1? Yes, please. Thank you, Councillor Alban. Item 6. Are there any other members? Are there any apologies for absence? No. No apologies for absence. Does anyone have any interest to declare in the items of business on the agenda this evening? No. no. Minutes of previous meeting. To approve the summary of recommendations and decisions of the Cabinet, meeting held on the 29th of April 2021. Copy is attached to the agenda pack. As this is the first ordinary meeting for this cabinet, I propose that these minutes are taken as read since they are for the meeting that was held under a different cabinet. Do I have a seconder? Seconder, councillor members. Do members agree? agree? Item four, evaluation of retention or disposal options for 18 Albert Street, Ramsgate. To introduce councillor Bayford. Thank you, Chair. 18 Albert Street is a Grade 2 listed building. It was previously occupied as a shared ownership property with the council owning a share. The previous occupants who own the remaining share were responsible under the terms of the sharing arrangement for the maintenance of the building. The property is in very poor condition, as detailed in the report, with high estimated costs of refurbishment. The property is also poorly laid out, with accommodation over three floors, connected by a narrow and winding staircase. The kitchen and bathroom are extremely small, and there is no outside amenity space. For these reasons, it is not considered suitable for retention as part of the council's rented housing stock. There is a specific requirement on the council to ensure that any disposal of vacant dwellings are at market value. It is therefore recommended that the Council test the market by disposing of the property at auction. I move the recommendations in the report. Thank you, um, Councillor Bayford. Speakers under 20.1, Councillor Austin. Thank you, Chair. Um, the, I'm speaking on behalf of the three Central Harbour councillors and groups within the community who we've uh, talked to, and we would like to propose that this decision be postponed for a period of at least three months. We quite see the difficulty with this property as rental housing, but we do think that in view of its Grade 2 listed status and the fact that it is so close to the Addington Street area, which for people who aren't familiar with Ramsgate is effectively becoming Ramsgate's old town, um, it's an area that is becoming increasingly popular. It's an area that has huge potential for de the development of cultural facilities. And in the light of the Ramsgate future work that's going on and the consultation that's happening in the community, we think there's a possibility that something could be made of this building uh, as a cultural asset, as a community asset, as something that will generate income for the council, and that funding may be able to be brought in externally to refurbish this potentially beautiful building back to the state that it was in. Um, and. Uh, um, it could be 
uh, a real benefit to Ramsgate as a tourist attraction and as a community asset. Uh, we are concerned that if the property is sold, we have a lot of negative experience in Ramsgate of land banking, so we're very concerned that the property might just be left to rot. And uh, we would ask, therefore, for a stay of execution on this building, ideally for six months, but if uh, Cabinet is not amenable to that, then for three months, while we discuss with the external funding team and um, Historic England whether this may be a, a possibility to do something with as a community asset. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Councillor Austin. Um, the disposal receipt could be used to support the development of new affordable homes in a more cost-effective way. Um, disposal will allow a potential new owner to refurbish the building and bring it back into use with the potential to restore the historic shop front on the ground floor. Sorry. We will be happy to see any local people at business or businesses interested in bringing the building back into use, having the opportunity to acquire the building at auction. This process was also satisfied the requirement of the Council for Disposal to be at market value. Um, Bob, perhaps you'd like to add something to that? Sorry. Uh, thank you, Councillor Bayford. Um, I think the one thing I would add to that is that um, the, uh, any, any delay is likely to see further deterioration in the building um, and um, I think that is potentially uh, problematic with uh, what, what you're suggesting. No. So, Councillor Bayford, would you like to move? Do I have a seconder? Are Cabinet agreed on the recommendations? Agreed. Item 5, representation on executive appointed outside bodies for 21-22, to which I will introduce. The Cabinet is being asked to agree the list of the following nominated nominations for the executive related outside bodies as shown in Annex 1 of the report. British Ports Association, Councillor Ashby. British Resorts Association, AGM Conference and Executive Meetings, Councillor Pugh. Community Safety Partnership, Councillor Cup. Domestic Violence Forum, Councillor Cup and Councillor Jill Bayford. East Kent Opportunities Limited, Councillor Ashby. East Kent Special Development Company, Councillor Robert Bayford. Kent's Police and Crime Panel, Councillor Cup. Local Government Association Coastal Special Interest Group, Councillor Pugh. LGA District Council Network, Councillor Ashby. LGA General Assembly, Councillor Ashby. LGA Strategic Aviation Specialist Interest Group, Councillor Ashby. Margate Town Partnership, this item has been replaced by the Margate Town Team, which does not have a member representation, therefore it has been removed from the list. South East Council, England Councils, Councillor Ashby, Supporting People in Kent Commissioning Body, Councillor Cup. Thanet Harbour User Groups, Councillor Ashby and Councillor Pugh. Thanet Quality Bus Partnership, Councillor Linda Wright. Tourism South East, Councillor Pugh, Your Leisure, Thanet Subgroup, Councillor Ashby and Councillor Pugh. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Cup, thank you. Do members agree? Agree. Thank you. I move on now to item six, Coastal Lift Current Position, to introduce Councillor Bob Bayford. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Um, this update was requested by the previous administration to understand the issues regarding the Viking Bay and Ramsgate lifts. Following a review of the work re required, it was agreed that the work to ensure Viking Bay lift is operational for this summer would be undertaken, that at a cost of 17400 and that this is allocated from the Council's Brexit Fund, which was provided by Government. The work is due to be completed at the beginning of July. 
there has been a delay due to bespoke new parts having to be made. On the completion of this work, the lift will be operational. There will also be a new emergency response and attendance procedure to ensure that if there are any problems, then these can be fixed as soon as possible, including the release of trapped passengers. Uh, the lift is over 20 years old, and to bring it up to modern day standards, a further investment of 45,000 would be required. This would basically replace all the major components, and whilst this would give the lift more longevity, no budget at the present time has been allocated for this work. Ramsgate lift is more problematic due to the theft of lead from the roof, £48,000 of work has already been undertaken, and it is anticipated that a further £20,000 will be required to get the lift operational. However, this will be subject to a structural survey that has only just been completed to see if there is more structural damage than first anticipated. Therefore, until we have a better understanding of the condition and work required, no further budget has been allocated. I ask Cabinet to uh, note the report, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Bayford. Um, speakers under 20.1, Councillor Bailey. Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> uh, and good evening, everyone. Um, first of all, I just want to um, say how pleased I am that the effort is being made to get the Viking Bay lift opened for this summer. For those who are dependent on using this lift, though, it was very disappointing to hear that the date for the reopening has been set back again, particularly as they were only told a fortnight ago that it would be opening as of next week. I appreciate the difficulties of having to wait for parts to be sourced and especially manufactured, particularly in these COVID-hit times. But when goalposts keep being moved, it has the effect of undermining trust and confidence. I'm glad that improved measures, including a dedicated manager, have been put in place to manage the daily operation of the lift, and I really hope that it will continue to, continue to be regularly maintained and monitored out of season two. I would like to know um, what assurance can be given tonight that the lift will in fact be ready to open on the revised date, that is the beginning of July. And I'd also be very interested in knowing more about the longer term options for upgrading the lift to make it compliant. The report state stipulates that the current repairs are only expected to see us through this year. So what about next year and the ensuing years? Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Bailey, yeah, thank you, Councillor Bailey. Um, obviously, I agree with you totally about the importance of the lift to the residents of Broadstairs, and it is very frustrating that uh, deadlines have been uh, missed, but it's totally beyond the control of this council. I mean, there's no pleasure in this council missing a deadline and getting the inevitable flack that comes its way. You know, it's circumstance that's put us there. As far as going forward is concerned, as I said in, in my little speech, um, there's a further investment of 45,000 which will be required to make the lift serviceable and it's thought that that cost could possibly be for up to five years but we've got to look into that a little bit further but it is being reviewed at the moment. Thank you. Do you move this uh, to... Oh. Sorry, Councillor Garner, you know, too much of a hurry there. Councillor Garner. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Leader. Yeah, um, yeah I, I echo a lot of what um, Councillor Bailey has said, and I might echo it in my little um, spiel. But as you're no doubt aware, especially the three Broadstairs based cabinet members, as Councillor Bailey said, there is disappointment in the town that the promised opening of the lift has been delayed. Um, and I can understand the reasons for that, but I'm dismayed that expectations weren't managed properly in the first place. Uh, the report states that the current repairs will only ensure that the Viking Bay lift is operational for the remainder of the summer season and leaves the question of the lift's future unanswered. Um, I think the question needs to be addressed urgently. A recent council website statement said that a long-term strategy for both lifts will be formulated to consider their future. As this report does not address this, I have a couple of questions. When will this long-term strategy be considered and agreed? Um, and does the new administration agree with me that Thanet beaches should be accessible to all residents and visitors? And will they confirm that they will work towards providing and maintaining a permanent all year round solution for all the lifts? Thank you. 
Okay, um, I'll ask Mr. White in a minute to, to comment on that. But I mean, I think that uh, again, I've already said that you know we're disappointed as anybody that we've missed the deadline. Um, can't keep saying that, and the TDC didn't want that to happen, but it just did. Um, and as far as managing expectations, I mean, people were told what we thought was the case, and then as soon as uh, the different was known, then then people were informed. Um, I also have said that we're looking right now at uh, the future. We're considering this £45,000, but it will be irresponsible of me to say right now on the hoof that we're going to make that available because it's not budgeted for. That money would have to be found. And uh, it, all I can do is to assure you that we are taking the business of the lift seriously and we're looking at them. Um, I'm not sure when you say uh, all uh, Planet Beach is to be totally accessible to everybody. I'm not sure that's a promise that anybody could make. Um, so I'm, I'm not prepared to make that one. But I don't know if Mr. White, you want to add anything to it? Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd just say that uh, in terms of uh, Operation uh, 365 days a year, uh, might be a bit of an issue. Uh, but for, for us as, as officers, is, is we're gaining all the information we can in terms of what works required, the cost of that work for both lifts. And obviously we'll present that to Cabinet and Cabinet can then make that decision. But we are working on, the on well, in terms of the replacement parts, uh, you, you need to appreciate that the cost of, of uh, some of the goods has significantly increased and actually the fact that they've had to make these goods from scratch or they've actually had to take the old ones out and actually manufacture new ones, that's what's t uh, taken a bit of time. So hopefully, and I'm still pushing, that the, the, the lift will be open in the first week of July and, and definitely by the start of school holidays. Thank you, Gavin. Um, to speak uh, under 21, one Councillor Alban. Yeah, thank you, Chair. <coughs> um, I'm not going to go over what my two colleagues behind me have, uh, have said. Um, but <coughs> what I was saying, in regards to the Broadstairs lift, um, of course, we're all sorry it's put back. You know, none of you know we would have liked it to be open on the day that it, that it was said. Um, but I take what Mr. Waits has said in relation to the bespoke uh, machinery parts that are required, and uh, and and they're not easy. But I, th I think what, you, what residents got to take from 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 that is that uh, hopefully the Broadstairs list will be open for the rest of the season. <coughs> However, the Ramsgate lift, lift is really what I'm co concerned about um, because one is a ward councillor uh, and two is a, a shadowing uh, councillor Bayford. Um, it, it is extremely disappointing uh, that it's unlikely to be available for 2021. Um, the residents of Ramsgate are really clear that, that they, it's, it's a necessary thing for, for all people, not just disabled people, for, for families to be able to use prams, get prams down, etc, etc, etc. What I'd like to ask is, um, just for some clarification, um, can I ask please if the, the insurance claim, uh, the 48,000 in, insurance claim, was that just for the repair of the roof? Once once the lid was nicked, uh, was it just for the, re for the replacement of that? And uh, if so, can we not go back to the insurance company? Uh, in, because obviously when the roof was off, the, the water damage that was uh, the ingress into the building itself and into the machinery, um, surely that now, that's, now we've had a look at that, can we then find that if, uh, that if that is the case, can we then go back and reclaim so the council can then get some money for that from the insurance company? Um, <clears throat> the, other, the other thing is within the report, it mentions the, the first floor doors um, that, are, that, that need replacing. Um, You've just mentioned, Councillor Bayford, about any other structural issues. So I think that's obviously very, very important that, that we get whether it is uh, the actual, uh, not the internal workings of the lift, but the structure of the building itself 
is damaged. So I think that's very important, and that needs to be done as soon as possible, so that we can that we can get that. So can I ask that that is done as quickly as possible, so that the residents of Ramsgate can then know exactly what the the, the issues are, and and for that to be put out t to them, because that helps us as war councillors to be able to do that. So just on those questions, uh, Chair, if I could get an answer to those, I'd be pleased. Thank you. Yeah, Councillor Alderman, um, I, th I think Mr Waite will be best placed to, to answer those, but I, mean, I think it's fairly clear that at the moment it's a bit of an unknown quantity, um, and at the moment I'm blaming you. Um, so, <laughs> the, <laughs> <Go ahead. laughs> Yeah, I mean, in terms of the damage was that the lead was taken off, we had water ingress and they fixed it, so I'll get the the detail of that to you. Uh, like I say, is, is they've done the structural survey and they've done some work to see if we can keep the actually get the lift operational because if the lift is working we've just got we've just got issues particularly at the bottom where the, the doors are opening and once we get an indication of what work's required we'll obviously and the estimate is twenty thousand but I would say that that twenty thousand has not been allocated. It's just a, an assumption based on what the the lift tech have, have told us. But we should have that sort of early next week, and I can I can let you have details of that in the town council as well. Thank you. Yeah, fine. Thank you for your comments, Mr. Alban. <laughs> we have duly noted. Um, would you like to move the proposal, the recommendations? Um, the cabinet has been asked to note the report. Just that, ask cabinet to note the report, Chair. Do I have a seconder? Second, Chair. Count. Counts, thank you. Okay. Do members agree? Item 7, Margate Digital Leveling Up Fund bid. To introduce Councillor Pugh. Thank you, Chair. As identified by the leader last week, we really do appreciate the opportunity made available to us by central government to be a priority in one area for the Leaven Up Fund. This report highlights a second opportunity that Thanet has to bid for the funding for Margate Digital, a cutting-edge, industry-relevant training space which aims to influence creative thinking and technology, inspire people and provide industry-ready candidates. The centre aims to deliver inward investment raise aspirations, provide opportunities for retraining and support SMEs in the centre. East Kent College Group proposes to deliver more than 200 learners in the first year who will be primarily aged between 16 to 19. The proposal aligns with the Margate Town deal, which we heard about at last week's meeting, and will support the regeneration and repurpose of Margate High Street. We are supportive of the bid, and it has the full backing of the MP for Thanet North, Sir Roger Gale, in fact, we have been lucky enough to have more than one opportunity to bid uh, to this fund with two MP constituency areas in the district. I would like to recommend that one, we approve submission of a 11 up bid to the 18th of June 2021 deadline. Two, we delegate authority to, chief, to the chief executive and the leader for final sign off of the 11 up bid. And three, the council will not make a financial contribution in any form within the 10% financial contribution encouraged in the prospectus and this will be contributed by East Kent College Group. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Pugh. Speaker under 20.1, Councillor Everett. Thank you, Leader. I'm sure you'd be disappointed if I had nothing to say about this. Um, I want to say at the outset that uh, I'm fully supportive of the Margate Digital Project. All such investment in that is a good thing, and this is an exciting initiative. Labour councillors represent the most deprived areas of Margate and we want to see them regenerated with more opportunities for local people. I do, however, have serious concerns about this bid. It is simply not acceptable that the Cabinet paper was published 24 hours before this meeting when the bid itself has to be submitted on Friday. That is the opposite of transparency, not just from the members' perspective, but also from the public's. It's not a very good start for this administration. I do recognise, of course, the heavy workload placed on the Director of Regeneration by the Ramsgate levelling up bid. Indeed, that is one reason the Labour Administration did not support the second bid, because we knew there was no capacity to deliver it properly. 
The report itself is substantially based on the one the Council received last week for Ramsgate. It's not at all clear what information could have been outstanding to today's publication. And that's why I've missed it. It doesn't even set out how much the bid is for. And I don't think Councillor Pugh said how much it was for either. I think the Council ought to be told that in a formal setting. But of course this isn't really the Council's bid at all. It's very much a case of his master's voice, or perhaps in this case, her master's. And if we hadn't known that, it's made clear at 4.2 that this is a proposal from the MP. Now, I don't have any problem with Sir Roger going over that. He's entitled to lobby for his constituency, that's his job. But it is the Council's job to balance the risks and opportunities for the whole district, not to take instructions from one MP or the other. The MP is supposed to be consulted, but not to the exclusion of everybody else. This bid is a clear and obvious risk to the Ramsgate levelling up bid. And we know that because the Director of Regeneration told Cabinet in her report last week that the funding overall is likely to be oversubscribed and the best option was to focus on one bid. Cabinet clearly hasn't taken that advice. It won't wash, I'm afraid, to argue that the competition between bids for Ramsgate and Margate is no different from the competition between Ramsgate and Dover or Derby or Darlington we all know that once Margate got a town deal, Ramsgate was never going to get one. It will be beyond naive to think that the Conservative Cabinet is not creating a risk that the government will say, thank you very much, we'll take the cheaper option for Margate and that's that it done, whatever assurances they give. This isn't a government whose word is its bond. Alternatively, we might see some money taken away from Ramsgate to give to the Margate bid. And that will be tragic because the Ramsgate bid is first class. This is an occasion when I hope that I'm wrong, I really do, because I want to see as much money coming to Thane as possible. But if what I think happens does happen, it will be the fault of a Conservative Cabinet, a Conservative MP and a Conservative Government, not the officers and not the Council as a whole. I will be angry about that, but more importantly Ramsgate will be angry and Ramsgate will not forget. Thank you. Thank you, Chair, and um, thank you, Councillor Robert, for your uh, questions and point. Um, it, it was funny, as you were uh, giving your speech or your comments, I kind of had in my mind the fact that we have a Conservative administration, we have Conservative MPs, and we have a Conservative government, but you laid it out for me, so <laughs> thank you for that. I mean, I think it goes without saying that all of the bids will be first class. Of course, we have fantastic officers that work incredibly hard, and they continue to do so. Um, to accuse this cabinet and this administration of not focusing its efforts, I think is a bit disingenuous. Um, but at the same time, I wouldn't expect anything less. Um, I mean, to be honest, there's not really much else to say apart from that, although I know your concerns, I think that this is an opportunity that we'd be mad uh, to ignore, we'd be mad to turn down, and I think that actually it's something that we should put all of our support behind. But of course, I'll defer to officers if they have anything else to add. Thank you, Councillor Pugh. Councillor Baker, would you like to speak? Yeah, thank you, Chairman. I mean, I, I can understand um, Ramsgate being upset about this in a way, but it's just another example of the parochialism that over the years has held the whole of Thanet back. I mean, we do need to think a, a bit more about Thanet as a whole. And this particular bid, it's got Margate on it, but surely it's to the benefit of all of our young people, the 16 and 19 year olds who desperately need a future. And this is actually heading them the right way, you know, towards good, well-paid jobs, to qualifications. And they won't just be Margate kids doing that. They'll be from all over the place, including Ramsgate. And I thought it was, you know, the fact that in the Ramsgate bid, Great emphasis is put on how much the people of Ramsgate want opportunities for their young people. Well, here we are. So th this is sort of a, a cooperative bid in many respects, rather than uh, an opposing one, I think. And I think it should be seen in that spirit, personally. Thank you, Councillor Bayford. Um, we have examined this in great detail. appreciate that it was the full report was late coming out. But I can assure members that um, this cabinet has spent long hours last week and this week and even at half past five this afternoon 
examining this bid. Um, and we also gave uh, full consideration to the Ramsgate bid. There was a lot of work that went into that so that we could get it in time on the basis that we were only in control for, I think, five days. So um, to, to say that we, didn't, we haven't examined either, um, especially with this bid, I can assure you that we have spent quite a lot of hours on it. Um, I would like to pass over to um, the Chief Executive because she can confirm that the question regarding whether the impact, uh, if the Margate Digital um, bid would have an impact on the, in reducing the Ramsgate bid was thoroughly examined and we have been assured by uh, Ian McNabb, who is the chequebook holder for these bids, um, that each an individual bid will be considered under its own merit and it, and it is entitled, every MP in the country is entitled to put a bid in. So I'd just like to confirm this has nothing to do with uh, his master's voice or his mistress's voice. This is an, a very exciting project and I only wish that when I was um, looking at educating myself when I lived in Margate 30 years ago, that this type of opportunity was around for me, because this is very exciting and I think the youth um, will benefit greatly for the whole of Thanet. This isn't just about Margate, it's just the premises happens to be in Margate and it is an ideal premises to actually launch this fantastic and exciting project. So I'm equally excited for the Ramsgate bid and um, obviously we'll be putting our full effort behind both bids and hopefully we will be successful with both. But I'd like to pass um, you over to the Chief Executive to confirm that um, that is the actual case, that one does not affect the other. Thank you, Leader. Um, yes, um, just to confirm that actually I think it's very positive that actually it appears very obvious and, and quite right that everybody is supportive of this project. Um, and I think, you know, at the end of the day it is a very good bid along with the Ramsgate one. Uh, in respect of the concern that's being raised around whether one bid undermines the other bid, uh, I can confirm that our understanding is, uh, and this is, has been confirmed by uh, uh, government representatives, that you will all be aware that every constituency uh, uh, is entitled to sub submit up to one bid. We do have two constituencies, two MPs, so we are entitled to submit two bids. The information we have also received is that it has to be seen in the context of those bids are just competing nationally with all bids that come forward. Um, and at the end of the day, MHCLG will make that decision, but they, those are the rules of submitting. We're entitled to submit two bids. I would just like to take the opportunity to confirm the amount of the bid that's been submitted for the Margate Digital Leveling Up. It is actually a bid for £6.3 million pounds with match funding, and that's already been ind indicated by the East Kent College Group. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Exec. I'd also at this point like to thank um, the Louise Askew for the work that she's put into this and also for the Margate Digital team that have also contributed considerably to get this packed together in a short space of time. And the finance team because they have been having to scrutinise and check numbers for, <laughs> for uh, most of the day, I think, um, they've been working on it so, to, so that we can get it here tonight, so that we can get approval, so tomorrow we can move the bid forward. And I really hope that both bids are successful because it is good to see money coming in from central government into this area. So if you'd like to move... Thank you, Chair. Yes, I, uh, I move the recommendations. Can I have a seconder, please? Councillor Cup. Do members agree? Thank you, everybody. That concludes the business for tonight's meeting, and I declare the meeting closed at 7.34.